All right. Hey, hey, hey. It's Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. And man, oh man, I'm here with my living roommate, my partner to be, my man, Theo. <laughs> Theo Benedict? Yeah. Yes. 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 I got his last Third name time's right. the charm. After seven weeks, we got it right. Uh, Theo came on the uh, show the first week, and we thought this is our first time doing it in five, six years, but we're doing a uh, recap and overall review of what the seven weeks of uh, combine pro day training for the NFL um, are like. And Theo, I'm sure, has tons of insight to give us. So I'm going to let Theo just ramble away on just, uh, I'll feed him a scoop here and there of a question to get it going. But uh, we'll probably be blowing snot bubbles out laughing so hard with some of this stuff. So Theo, welcome back to the show. It's our last weekend. You fly out tomorrow afternoon. And my job the next 48 hours is to make sure nothing goes wrong with your body, inside yeah. and outside. So yeah. we're yeah. going to keep it tight and right. So welcome back to the show, and welcome to the last weekend of uh, ever doing this again. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's probably been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life the last seven weeks, but that's probably also made it like the most one of the most memorable things I've ever done, that's for sure. And... uh yeah, we've been been through a lot, you know, ba- had to battle through a lot, but uh I'm hoping in the end that that just means, you know, it's that much sweeter when when we accomplish everything at my at my pro day next week and and uh yeah, it's been a learning experience on on uh so many levels in terms of of what it takes to to, you know, keep pushing and, and trying to accomplish all my goals. Yeah, like I've learned one thing for sure I've learned is that, you know, it's never going to be perfect like the Last year, part of the reason I ended up going back to school, we talked about that on the last podcast, was that I didn't want to do a pro day with a back injury. And then I came down here, and then I've gotten sick. I've hurt my ankle. And and certainly there's been a lot of factors that are going to, you know, be I'm going to be taking with me into the pro day. And so <laughs> in many ways, in many ways, it will. Ne- what I learned is it's never going to be perfect. There's always going to be something that you have to overcome, something that presents a challenge. And it's about it's about reacting to that, not so much avoiding that. If that makes sense, it makes a lot of sense. And if I could uh, step in and say this, and Griff, you'll know it, Ben. You know, I think you're getting there. I think you're going to be that guy soon. But um, shout out to Big Joel Olstein on the car, right? Big Joel, <laughs> because I got this guy. He uh, understood Job a little. I told him about Job in the Bible, and he's like, "Man, oh man, I feel like Job." And I was like, "Wow." You're getting closer to it because you get, the closer you get to him, the harder it is. It's reversed to what you think. And uh, he's going through a lot of adversity that he's never gone through before. And I was like, that's the love of Jesus Christ coming through you right now. And I know he doesn't believe it, but I'm like, I'm telling you, brother, it's that way. It's going to happen. It's how you deal with it when it happens. It's going to be there. And he was like, I feel like Job. And I'm like, at the end, was he rewarded for being, you know, diligent to his his faith he was he was and you're going to be but uh griff hadn't been around ben's been in a little bit more than griff's been around lately griff went out of town to uh japan i got it right this time yeah big shout out to griff with japan but when you fell over those hurdles and i thought you broke your back your wrist he had two cuts on both wrists looked like he was trying to you know shut it down for himself and i heard him going and i was like oh my god what are you doing that'll He's out come there. over nice on the audio yeah, yeah i know and uh you know he he was on the ground backwards and the hurdles were super high and i had to go out there and yell and go why did we raise them the workout didn't I was telling Wilkerson this yesterday at our going away party last night for Theo. It's like, they have to stick. If it says two holes, stick to two holes. If it says 70 pounds, 70 pounds. You know, I know the weight you could just, but like he was jumping super high. So we got away with that one. I thought he was down because everybody got scared. We were having a rager out on the turf. Everybody was singing on the karaoke. And all of a sudden, party pooper Theo blows his, you know, and it, no, that was the ankle. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That was another episode with <laughs> yeah. the ankle. So we've had some things, man, that we, we escaped that hurdle one yep. and the ankle was serious. And then that's, that's when the true Testament came about my, my opinion of like, okay, he's testing him like to see where, if he's going to fold, he's going to, you know, cause all the Canadians and you guys know this, um, their walk is different. Let me just say that. And it's more flesh 
oriented of like I got to in the stress and the anxiety and the stress. And then when you like turn that over and go, you know, he has to look at the things of like, I'm in good hands. This isn't his first rodeo. He's not 27 years old. He's almost 56 years old. He's almost 34 years in the game. He's almost seen everything and anything. So maybe I've seen a pro day, a combine couple months like this, but I can't remember one because, you know, his numbers were getting there and his food was getting there. And, you know, we had break homeostasis, which is like holding on to weight or not dropping weight. And you just sit in that fight battle back and forth. And we finally popped through holding on to 303 in the morning where he was losing six pounds a night because he's so muscular. You know, he's my Harrison Smith of offense alignment. And I keep telling him that. And I, it, it's not to gas him up. i believe that if i didn't believe that i wouldn't say that and we've living with this and you know he's gonna have to tell you his own experience with that but the, the turmoil of that and i don't adjust my radio station he knows that unless it's joel's wife that gets on there shout out to joel's wife but you know she's not as good as joel joel's man right we, we get that like the man for where we are in life we get it but so on Saturday or Sunday, we'll listen to regular stuff. But besides that, it's on. And it's like, I'm telling you, and every time, guys, we are talking about something or something happens, whatever the word is, comes through that way. And that's what I'm trying to tell people is it lines up when you follow it. It'll, if, but you have to be cautious to it. You have to, uh, you know, you have to see that, you know, uh, I give you this thing real quick and I want you to speak. But when you get in, uh, we talk about Defender Cars. Right, we talked about defender cars. So when you're heightened to that and alert to that, what have we spotted more? A lot of, a lot of defenders. Yeah. Same thing with Jesus. So when you have Jesus, you'll spot things and take it and take what He's telling you. And if you don't, it'll just pass by. And it was there because that's when everybody's like, "Oh, He didn't reward me with anything. He could have, but you may have not seen it." And it's not your plan. That's the beauty of this. It's not your plan. It's His plan. So you were supposed to roll your ankle. You were supposed to get sick. And if you do that, and I gave him that, it's like, man, I'm sore in the morning. Again, and said, wow, mm -hmm. this all you got? Like, you, this is what you want me to try to overcome the next two weeks is this swollen ankle? Okay, let's do it. And that's what I think, and, and I think the paper champion of, of the mental side, and we know a lot of athletes, and I've, I've had some really good ones where, they went to camp, they got drafted, and the GM would call me and go, he's just not mentally tough. He can't go through some pain, but he's a freak athlete, this and that, but he's not going to make the club because of that. And I think that's where Theo's, I mean, because he even said, I've never faced this adversity like I have. And he's only 22 years of age. You got to think that. He's, he's a young man. He's not, you know, seen the world at 45 or whatever, or retired, or even Harrison Smith at 35. You know, he's 22, and a young 22 and he's just coming over a lot of adversity that he's never had before. And I'm like, you know, I hate to tell you, but it'll be worse than this right now because all this is for you. These are all nope. selfish acts, Ben, not selfless acts. Selfless acts is is what I do all day long and get paid for it. It's a, it's such a high and it's such a win. And it makes me feel so good every day of serving others. And, and it feels good doing that. And I think he's doing a selfish act and it's all about him. And I think he's going to be the type of guy is when he gets his money, when he, he's going to give back, you know what I'm saying? And he's probably the guy that will come back and see me. He's like, I'll come back and see you because then it turns into selfless acts. What can I do for somebody else? And that's the stuff that, um, I hope I'm showing him just by my walk through the day and then being crazy as I am. And, and Theo says the same thing, Griff, I don't know how you do it. Like you're up before sure. I'm, I, I don't know how you do it every day. And it was like, I don't know how I do it either. I just do it. You Four know? hours of sleep, eight hours of sleep. It's the same thing. <laughs> same energy. <laughs> They're like, this guy's energy. Cause they come in walking, you know, it, and I've been up for four or five hours and they're just walking in and it's a different energy, but I have an obligation and responsibility that you put. And he knows he lives with me. So he, he, he when you live with somebody, you see everything and anything about them. And it's the beautiful thing because you could define all their character, all their tendencies, all their weaknesses, or, oh, I know why you're not making it. Or I do know why you're making it. Or I know why you're not successful in this area. And I know why you're successful in this area. All the little things you see and vice versa. He sees the same thing. And hopefully he could take some things away from the 56 year old guy, you know, and go, okay, I could, man, he, I, he taught me that. And I could learn from him with certain things. And we, We've had some conversations where we've talked about certain personal things, and he was like, 
you know, you're not going to win that conversation because of, and I was like, never thought about it that way. And even to the, um, the uh, broad jump and vertical jump with Thomas Harper, you know, my guy that I trained all through high school and all through college. And he went somewhere else to train with another agent, which is fine. You know, that's okay. But his numbers could have been better off his vertical and broad. And Theo brought up a point that I addressed with some of my close people. And they were like, Theo's 100% right by going, the broad jump, the vertical jump, you really can't teach a lot of technique. That comes from years of foundation of training. That's you. So when he jumped his 42 and broad jumped 10-5 or 10-6, Theo was like, that's you. Because then his L drill and his short shuttle, this cat's going to be right there on his Thomas Harper's times. That, and Thomas Harper's 189 pounds. He's going to be 305 pounds getting that close to some of those skills. And I text Thomas the same thing, and he loved it. He he responded back, I love it. Like, just so they could be aware of that, you know, and go, okay, cool. And that was from a 22-year-old guy. That's, you know, you still could get wisdom from all you guys. And I do it from you too, Ben, and here a lot. And it's beautiful when you have that community. And I think Theo will probably walk away going, I need a circle like that some, because even the people that he's around from agents on and Sasha, the anxiety of this and that, because, you know, when he did that, they feed off each other. You could hear him upstairs talking. They're feeding it. and It's getting bigger and bigger instead of going, it's all going to be okay. It's all going to, we got this. You're going to, you're going to be great. And he doesn't see that great Griff and Ben, because he's not there yet. You know, and it's like, I've been where you haven't, my eyes have seen what your eyes haven't seen yet. It's a great quote. So seven weeks. Yeah, but totally like you said, I think that the number one thing that you've told me that I think really like changed my perspective on things and, and I'm really going to take with me, as you said, working out is one of the most selfish things you can do. And I never really thought about it that way. But when I did, you were right in the sense, you know, you walk in, you think, well, I'm working hard. This is such a good thing to do. Like, look at me, but you're doing it all for yourself. No one else is benefiting from this. You're taking time out of someone else who's being paid for it, but still someone else is helping you do this. You have a physio helping you do what you want to do. Your agent is helping you do what you want to do. Your family is supporting you to do what you want to do. And it's really all for yourself in the end. Yeah, exactly. So so when I looked at it that way, I think it really changed my perspective and 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 I attacked it with a lot more positivity in the sense I wasn't going like, oh, I have to do this workout. Wow, I get to do this workout and I'm so lucky and privileged to have all these people supporting me to do this for myself and and to me that was kind of the most uh like perspective changing thing that that i i've taken from from being able to talk with you and stuff yeah i mean and you know it's not that we're just not working hard we're working smart and you're sure. fabulous talent so it's all gonna work you know and, and the work guys We've gone 47 days straight. There's not another program in the country that would do that. Wouldn't we even want it think any other way. It. They wouldn't think about it because no. it's like Pennington, Chad Pennington said, he's so dumb it works. Because <laughs> I don't think like everybody else thinks. I'm not smart, you know, so it's like I'm just going to do it this way and just go with whatever I feel from the, everything in my past to pull the, upon. We need three sets instead of four sets or five sets or come back this afternoon or not come back this afternoon. Yeah, I, I agree with you and the selfish and the selfless acts. And that's what I was trying to tell them. And we change what do I what do I got to do today instead of what do we get to do today? Exactly, and yeah. that's a beautiful thing too, of waking up going, people ask me this morning, how's Charlie doing? Well, my feet hit the floor today. And I always keep that motto, but it works. It's like Man, you know, there's a lot of people out there f far worse. And I even said with his injury, with his ankle injury, Ben, it could have been worse. And who's to say that we, you know, we didn't blow something the day after that was more major of a muscle group or something that we didn't have time to get ready for pro day. You, so when you look at, you just got to look at those things. And I think it helps. And, and, and you know, talking about, um, I'm telling you, Griff, you know this, is yesterday's devotional, it talked about um, when Jesus had everybody over and everybody came in with sandals and dirty feet and they were about to eat supper and he stopped and cleaned everybody's feet. I don't, I don't know, and maybe if I sent that to you or not sent that to you, it was two days ago scripture. And it's the same thing that I try to do in here in the house is, you know, he's been sick, he battled this huge stomach bug and um, he, 
I don't know how to say this, but he did a lot, a lot of damage to the toilets and showers and everything. And uh, I had to get a plunger, and he goes, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'm like, no, I want to do it. Like, I want to do that. I'm good at it, and I want to do it, and I'm not too good not to do that and take out, you know, the same thing. And then the scripture the next morning was that one. And it's like, that doesn't, how, how is that coincidence? I don't, I don't think so. I don't go on coincidence. I don't go on by chance. I go on like, I, not that I'll show you. It's like, yeah, this is who I am. It doesn't change. And I think that's the people that he got to meet in here, like the Harrison Smiths. He's like, wow, he's, he's different or, you know, how he is and just laid back or how, how are you guys? He, he understood us at the end when we were walking out going, okay, you guys are nuts. The stuff you like, your conversations are totally off the walls, but he gets it, you know? And I think that's the beautiful thing is like when Harrison and I train, train like you don't have talent and it never fails when you think like that. So it's like, take out the garbage, unclog the toilet. I don't care if it was, your mess it's still my house my toilet and i enjoy doing that because i fix it it feels good by going i had to do it last night <laughs> had to unclog another toilet from a get-together we had for theo it was running in the hallway and ross came out and said hey and who's there doing it on his hands and knees and unclogging another toilet and it's Way to like, go, doc. Yeah. good job doc we get it <laughs> fold it over for god's sake you know wipe it with a pillow so, yeah, so the seven weeks are amazing, and I could keep going, and I, I don't want to stop yet because I, I want more insight on um, what it really is like because it's so unique, and we've had agents not tell people that they're coming here before they get here. Of like, it's I asked Theo this question, is it really weird to live with your trainer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's a total immersion and a total – isolation from everything I've been used to and, and the way I've lived in Vancouver or, or things like that, where it, it demands like that you're totally, totally invested in the process in terms of eating right. I mean, in some ways studying, right? Like every, we're watching all the combines, all the pro days, trying to get as much information we can out of, you know, what the scouts are doing this year, as opposed to another year, what they're looking for, how they're running the test, foot placement, things like that that come with being able to, to live with you. Um, and that wouldn't come if I was just, you know, living in some apartment and then going four or five times a week to go see the trainer in the gym and, and having that experience, I think is, is totally transformational in terms of what, what the training can actually achieve. Because I mean, realistically, in a however long you're training for, let's say six to 10 week window, you're not changing who you are as an athlete. Totally. You're, you're, improving in certain areas, making tweaks technically and, and building on what you have, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so to be able to do that, <clears throat> it, it makes, helps you make those six weeks a lot longer in terms of what you're able to get out of them than you would mm -hmm. otherwise, if that makes sense. Yeah. I don't think, uh, there's no fake in that bake when no. you live with somebody on both ends. And I do think you're totally immersed in it and it is, Griff, like custom auto with the boxing of uh, you get in the car. We talk about what we just did in the workout and what we could do. And we're mm -hmm, on the couch. Mm -hmm. And I called Theo down to Alabama Pro Day. I'm like, Theo, come down here. And he doesn't go, what is it? He comes down because he's like, okay, Charlie's calling me for something, whether he's going to break my balls on something or, you know, he didn't put this away or whatever. But I'm coming down. And I said, see that guy's foot placement on the Pro Day. On, I'm not going to say the exercise or the discipline that they went through. I'm like, do that that way. Cool. You can't get that if Theo leaves the, the gym and mm -hmm. I go home to my house and he we're in the car and we cut driving and we're driving in bad moods, good moods, quiet moods. There's times that we're in the car and we're not saying anything to each other all the way home. We don't have to. You know, now you developed a different you just developed a different bond. And that's the game changer, in my opinion, because he knows he could call on me anytime. And I'll be there for him and probably vice versa at this point, because you've gone through so much. You've had some arguments. You've had some up and downs. You've had some a lot of frustration because the last two weeks, now all of a sudden we have a full day. There's no rest through the day because he has to do his morning sessions, breakfast, morning sessions, maybe lunch, maybe not lunch. Then he has to go rehab his ankle for two, two and a half hours. Then we come back for the last two weeks. That's nothing. And I hope he does. And I know he does. Sees the sacrifice 
that I've put into it and the people around Absolutely. me have put into That's it are going, okay, about being selfish. you could charge whatever. It's still not enough of what you're doing because you've given up mountain biking training. You're giving up any time alone. You're giving up time with your kids, time with family members, times with your person. You're giving all that time up and you're totally immersed in that. And and that's, I've been doing it like that for so many years. I wouldn't know how it is the other way. The other way seems foreign to me of going somewhere, a hotel room, you got Panera bread cards, subway cards, you work out once, maybe an hour and a half a day, and you don't work out on weekends. You have a Friday morning session and you're done for the weekends. We're back in here this afternoon. We're back in here for another two hours. And we're back in the same Sunday in the morning, Sunday afternoons. I mean, Guys, I haven't been leaving here until 6, 6.30 on Saturdays and Sundays, and correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely. So, I mean, we are putting in more work. So the whole thing is do more. That's what I'm about. Instead of less is more, you know, everybody gets in these fads of, oh, you don't have to do that much. You do. You, you, you really do because it's specialty drills and it's things that you've not seen before or practice as much as this, and then it goes away. So you're totally immersed into something that is foreign to you. That's how I look at it. No, you're you're totally right, and, and um, I, I now I, I that's another thing. After these seven weeks, I don't think I could do it any other way. If I was to redo it, I mean, I I don't I don't understand doing it the other way now at this point. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah this way is like crazy. Yeah. It's 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 foreign to a lot of people, but it has to be done because. Guys, we say this, the model's completely reversed. You don't spend time with the first round guys. You spend time with these guys. This is the time you put in and it's they, it's opposite. It's But if you see something in somebody that you could pull out, you put the time in them and you need this time. You, you can't, you know, he's not coming from Alabama and he's not projected first round. He's not, he's a no name unknown to a lot of people out there you know, the NFL world knows about him, but after that, it doesn't until he pops, until he becomes Laurent on this side of the wall again. Then all of a sudden, everybody knows him, and Laurent's on HBO Sports with you know, Brian Gumbel doing great things, and he's going to be the Harrison Smith offensive lineman. He'll play 10 to 12 years. It's that. It's really that easy because he has all the intangibles. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's where that's why it's, yeah, it's hard and it's fun, but it's so good because it's something to look forward to also of like, oh, wow, Sunday afternoon, whoo, I'm going to take Theo and I'm going to, you know, hopefully get my bike back or not or use one of my other bikes, maybe go mountain bike ride, maybe grill out a steak outside, smoke a cigar, just sit out back and reflect on it and go, well, I put in a lot of work. Went, we, I did it again, man. We, we, You know, those things are the fist pumps for me, you know, and you get back on the plane and then we talk it through for the rest of the week and Mm -hmm. then you hit your pro day. And then, you know, nowadays I can FaceTime and be right there with them most of the time. And, you know, that feels good. And then uh, his dream comes true. And then it fills up my illness or my gift of co-dependency of showing my love into somebody and going, man, he's made to the NFL, you know, and I'm just sitting in the wood gym, you know, just doing my same thing. Another one's going to be a star and a celebrity. And I'm just a, no name guy just beating it around town. It's, I'd love it that way. I wouldn't change it for for the world, you know. So that's where it is for me for the seven weeks. I mean, and we've had a blast. I mean, we've had some the kids, <laughs> the kids so funny, man. We've had like some snot bubble laughs, and we we've just had some things that you're like, because we're so different in so many ways, and that's what makes it so fun. You can't say that he's gonna trademark that line is going to be world famous for him on the back of a shirt. You can't say that because he rides around with me all day. And it's like, you can't say that. You can't do that. You can't say that. You can't do that. You can't say that, you know, because he's probably a very big culture shock. I know we had it for 11, 12 days last year, but this year yeah, without your different. agent, yeah. it's you've seen, you could go back and tell stories and it's shoot a, a movie. It's a whole different continent down here than it is in Canada. So, yeah. What yeah. have you taken away from all of it? Just, you know. Culture shock-wise, a lot. I mean, I, it's, I mean, people say that about traveling, about how it's supposed to change your perspective. And I think when people say that, like, it, they have in mind, like, oh, going to Asia or something. But even just coming down to, to the American self, like, it's a totally different way of life, totally different values as to what people, you know, consider important in their lives and, and yeah, like I, I now I think at least uh, understand the people down here a lot better than I did uh, before I came down here. And I think that will help me also in the NFL. Like a lot, obviously I'll be the smallest, small, small minority uh, on these teams as a Canadian. So 
I think that will help me a lot. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, you know, he's been down here so long, his mom and dad visited him. His uncle was here for three or four days. We had to entertain your uncle. Yep. You know, we took him out to eat, and he came over to eat, and, 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 you know, on the couch. And it's like, your break time is when you get into the bed for the, you know, four or five hours I sleep, and then you're right back at it. And then he's, he's, he's stuck on you. It's glue on glue. You know, it's like mm-hmm. we're, we're doing everything together. And uh, I think it's been great. And I think that uh, life philosophies are where I get juiced from. You know, I mean, the, the training I love. I mean, it's at, especially yesterday when we started to pop stuff. And yeah. even Joshua Brown, the other guy, is training with us too as he started popping his sprints and you're starting to pop your jumps and your short shuttles and everything's coming about. And it's so beautiful watching that happen, right? Right yeah. at the end, you know, especially with the two, three weeks that we've had of some serious adversities. And look, you overcame them. You know, now you're going to be what we call resilient. You're going to have more resiliency in you to go. Uh, the next thing to come, I'm going to get through it. Mm-hmm. You know, it may not be the way I want to, but I'm going to do the cards that are dealt. I'm going to get through it. And I think that's amazing. And um, we just had a good time last night, too. It was fun. Yeah, it was nice to kind of put a bow on things. And, yeah. And people probably, you know, they, they view the celebration after the pro day, and, and certainly I will. But there's also, I think you have to understand that that for something like a pro day, the, the real joy is in the work. And, and it it's not so much like a game where you're trying to perform your best on the day. You're performing your best in training. And then <laughs> once you're on the pro day, at the pro day, you're hitting the numbers that you're going to hit. You've already trained to do it to those numbers so so really that you should be celebrating the work finishing the work as opposed to finishing the pro day so uh that's why i think yesterday was so nice just as kind of a take a deep breath and and take it all in how far we've come and and the progress we've made and the people you've met exactly you know people wanting pictures with you and and, uh you know wishing you well that's what makes it memorable i mean the 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 numbers are what i'll take with me physically but what you remember obviously is the people and (laughs) And the experiences, it's, so it's so. I just sit around at the house where I throw these. We call them ragers. Theo and I call them ragers. And you're just looking at the eclectic people that are there, like all the different walks of life. And uh, I don't understand how it's possible that there's so many wildly colorful characters. I know it around one gym in Knoxville. I know it. I know it. Uh, and it's it's that's beautiful. And too. Randy couldn't even make it. And, he got yeah. caught in traffic. Big shout out to Randy. Mount Zion. <laughs> he was yeah. he, he had to go stop by the church. So. Sorry, Randy, I didn't give you the address. A lot of things happened quick, so uh my phone went away for a long time. But a good shout out to Randy. Next time we'll see you Randy. The spine splitter four thousand. Thank you, Randy. Uh, yeah, I know. I think the people that uh, they show genuine love for yeah. you, and then Griffin, oh, be, he, he'll, he'll be the guy. How's he doing? What he do? And, and and you make a great point. It's it's the work, and and you guys know that. I mean, now Ben's training, and Griff's training, and when you do your event, it's not the same as the training part. That that's the. I mean, I know Kobe's talk about it, and Harrison's talk about it, but it's it's really true. Is like you're going to do the pro day and go, okay, cool. You know, I knew I was going to do those things. The joy is in the journey. Now not it's the destination. on. Right. Yeah. You're going to, you know, because, I mean, Griff and I talked about that. His, his father talked about it. You know, Keith DeLong, his rookie year with the 49ers, you know, um, Super Bowl champ, got the ring, and then that's it. Correct me if I'm wrong, you know. Yeah. The Yeah, lowest moment of his entire life the next morning is Super Bowl wow. champ. And, and I've heard that before. You definitely hear that with all the gold medals because the Sean Whites, the Michael Phelps, they work so – I wouldn't even – that's another thing I was switching is hard work. They work so hard, but maybe it's joyful work. Maybe it's peaceful work. I started switching that word in there of like hard. Is it is it really what, – what again, the selfish act, is it really that hard or is it enjoyable or – peaceful or rewarding work i mean it doesn't that word let's go have some fun work and everybody thinks fun is not serious and you know as well as i, I crack a lot of jokes here keep it light for you i've done no, it for years like yep. that but yep. when it comes to being serious i'll turn to him and go theo i'm serious like no more reps on that i'm like i'm serious I'm like that's it i know when to get serious and most of the time it's more joking because i have to because you're revved up so much it's a very important time in your life a very important day everything is riding on it and that's the beauty of that 
you better believe everything is riding on it. So you will produce because the guys that say they don't get nervous at pro day or combine or in the kitchen with me before they fly out are always the guys that shit the bed. So embrace that energy that nervous, embrace that sad, embrace the pain, embrace the hurt, embrace the disappointment. And then you'll have it all because you've embraced all your emotions. There's nothing that's out there foreign to you. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So yeah, next Friday is a damn big day. And no, oh, it's just another, it's not another day. And you'll actually rise to that. Cause if you think it's just another bike ride, it's just another squat. I don't think you'll do it instead of going a lot of counts on this. Absolutely. I, I spoke to Laurent just yesterday and awesome. he told me, he told me, he said, you're going to be really stressed, but understand that that stress can be a superpower or it can be an anchor, like an anchor that holds you back. And he said, like, stress can give you supernatural strength and all that stuff. So just use that to your advantage. That's what he told me. Yeah, and Laurent, Laurent is the number one guy that I started with in 2014 that went on and played a hell of a career and a doctor and an amazing person, an amazing athlete. And, uh, hey, Laurent, he's going to blow your numbers out. Coming for you, Laurent. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna be, he's going to blow his numbers told his agent that and told everybody that. And Laurent would want that. You know, that's a classy act guy totally, he is. Totally. It's like, yeah, let's do it. So I think we're, what, 10 years, 11 years? Where are we? Yeah, with Canadian guys? Yeah, 2014, that, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, go out there and have fun and do that. No, you're going to go out and put down some numbers. You know, wh whatever that fun looks like, but you're going down to put some numbers down. Oh, you I'll know? have fun, but I'll put some numbers down. Yeah, yeah. joke yeah. around with it and, yeah. you know, give yourself a clap when you do your big vertical and your bar jump and – Give yourself that pat on the back of I did it. And, oh, I don't always need more. Remember we talked about that? Yeah. The yeah. great the great ones say, Griff and Ben, listen to this. The great ones say, keep me out of this time. Keep me out of not jumping this. Not I need to get this time. It's the other way around where it produces the right way. So with Theo, it would be like, Charlie, I got to stay out of the five ones. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, you right. You hit this number, but if you fixate on that, you won't go through the process of how drive stride sprint and your you won't go through the training techniques if you're fixated on that one thing. You know, and, and when I competed in Olympic lifting and we did snatch, there's seven phases to the snatch, and I thought of all of them. I didn't go, I gotta lift it from the ground to over my head. I lifted through the process of what they taught me to do. And the beauty of that is when you're on stage or when you're on the turf, you won't think of that. It'll just happen. But you're just, you know, you're going to do it. I mean, you've worked for it. That's the thing. It's not unknown. And I think the people that don't work seven, six days a week, they put numbers that they know they can't do. And that's the difference is you think you can run it? Then do it. I said it yesterday. You know, it's like, what do you think I could run? Doesn't matter what I think you could run. What do you think you could run? I'm not running it. I've done the same techniques and drills that I've done with – T. Higgins, C.J. Procise, Leonard Fournette, Harrison Smith, Chad Pennington. We can go on and on. Same same exercises. Same philosophy in my head. You got to do it. And you got to do it. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's For not sure. It's not rocket science. And I think that, you know, I think you're going to do great. Uh, it's, you know, only, I know you're going to do great. You know, and that's the thing. What do we get? What do we got? I'm just, I'm, I'm ready I know you are. I can't wait for you to, and this is a crazy sentence, but I can't wait for you to get in bed in your own house, in your own environment, and go, ha. Ah. Same. You know, and, 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 and I know I've made my home as, as yeah. homey as it can oh, be yeah. 100, but yeah. it's still not like your home. But he was sick one day, and uh, he's had this stomach bug. He's lost 20 pounds this week. 20 pounds. We're going to put it back on. He's going to run great. And I was knocking on the door. I didn't want to interrupt him too much because I know when people are sick, you're like, just leave me alone. I'll see you in two days. Right, Ben? So I was like, let me see what he's doing. He's got to take this one thing for his stomach to ease it down. And he's like, I'm on the toilet. I'll talk to you in a minute. I'm like, well, no, we don't have time for that. And I just opened up the door. <laughs> And he's on the toilet, and he looks like Fred Flintstone in the car or Dave Marlowe in the C-230 <laughs> bands, whichever one it is. He's so huge. You could tell, like, just one butt cheek sitting on the toilet, you know, because it's, it's you know, he's a huge man. And I'm just sitting there talking to him, making sure he takes this pill down. And I was like, 
yeah, I think this is different. Yeah. <laughs> I think we crossed over a threshold yeah, of the unknown. We're doing this at Axos. <laughs> we're not doing it at I- IPI or IMG Academies. All right, Theo, man, I love I you. Know, and and we're going to have fun. Yeah, yeah, I love you. Take yeah. care. All right. All right.